Hey everyone, Father Bonnie here. I'm sure some of you are worried, wondering where I disappeared. Uh, I was traveling, I was in Thailand and uh, I know that when most people think Thailand, they think sex and sleaze. Uh, you can be assured I was not there for that. But uh, it's a beautiful country, it's, uh, Bangkok's a beautiful city and um, I cannot tell you how impressed I was. Of course, I must tell you that uh, I overindulged in the great Thai food uh, myself and I was really surprised uh, you know for those of you who know the chef and me uh, the flavors that explode in your mouth they're absolutely fantastic it was an Easter treat if I may say so myself but coming to the text of today which uh, we are in Tuesday of the fifth week of uh, sorry in the fourth week of Easter and the first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles we are in chapter 11 verses 19 to 26. Now, when you read this text, right, as I keep encouraging you, read the text, because there is a little verse in this text, really, which has triggered off today's uh, teaching, and that is verse 21. It said, the hand of the Lord was with them. The hand of the Lord was with them. Now, as I said, this little line may elude us in all the great details of what is happening in the early church because really the text of today tells us of the explosion of the faith beyond the Jewish community. For the first time now, uh, there is a mass movement towards evangelizing the Gentiles and this text ends with that famous verse in um, 26. It is in Antioch that the, that the disciples were called Christians. So in all of this, this little verse of 21, the hand of the Lord was with them could be tremendously lost and I want to focus on this and also uh, on what is happening in this text and also explain it very pastorally to you so that you can take something away from this text. Now, uh, when you look at this text of today, really, it's um, it kind of connects to chapter 7 and chapter 8. Let me explain. The text of today tells us that th that the persecuted church, it says now those who were scattered because of the persecution that took place over Stephen traveled to Phoenicia, Cyprus and Antioch. So it really takes us to the persecution of Stephen. That's at the end of chapter 7. We are told that a great persecution breaks out in the church of Jerusalem and all but the apostles leave and travel to the districts of Judea and Samaria. But now our text of today tells us that they traveled even further. We are told they have gone to Phoenicia uh, which is on the Mediterranean coast. They have gone to Cyprus. They have gone to Antioch. And most probably, this is the Antioch in uh, or in Turkey. There were several Antiochs named after uh, Antiochus, the, the king. So these were Greek cities. So the disciples now have moved way beyond. And while they initially went and evangelized only to the Jews, we now know that they were they were evangelizing also to the Gentiles. But here's the important thing. God's hand was with them. So even though the opening verse tells us they were scattered because of persecution, and scattered is a very strong word. It means that people no longer can be together with the ones that they want to. Even though they were scattered by man, God had other plans. And I want to say this, you know, when you feel... Uh, kind of rocked by the world, pushed away, isolated, marginalized because you stand for Christ, don't worry. You see, God has a plan. They were scattered from Jerusalem, torn away from their hometown, but God took them to strange lands to use them to evangelize and to minister. Now, the text of today tells us, therefore, for the first time, and I'm looking at my notes, that some of the Greek-speaking believers made this tremendous breakthrough. Now, think about this. Supposing you made a breakthrough. Uh, you were in an organization, a multinational company. You made a breakthrough in sales. And like the disciples, they reported this matter to Jerusalem. That is the headquarters. What would the headquarters do? I think most multinationals would send a team of experts to build up on uh, you know, this new boost in sales. In this case, there were new converts and they report this matter to Barnabas. 
Hello, hello. This is what the headquarters of the apostles did. Uh, sorry, they reported this matter to the apostles. If this is what uh, the headquarters did. This is what Peter, James, John did. They sent Barnabas. Now, this is the third time that we are going to we hear Barnabas' name. We know already uh, he is called the son of encouragement. But today he is also, we are also given other qualifications. We are told he was a good man. He was full of the Holy Spirit and he was a man of faith. We see this in verse 24. So the way God deals uh, with situations is not the way humans would. We would send, as I said, crack legal teams, crack experts in management, you know, the best worship team. I don't know what we would have done. God did the, the headquarters in Jerusalem simply send Barnabas, a man who was good, a man who was a man of faith and a man who was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, I um, want to make a few reflections based on uh, this text of today. First, is the hand of God with you? This is a question you need to ask yourself and you know the answer. Is God with you? Because when God is with you, you know, just everything you do turns to success, much very often to the dismay of your critics. And believe me, uh, Christians have critics from within the fold. I always say this, you don't have to look far. But is the hand of the Lord with you? Do you feel God's presence, his peace in everything that you are doing? So no matter how much you are rocked, you continue to feel God's hand with you. Uh, you know, the when this, this um, matter went to Jerusalem, these initially disciples who have come, traveled to Antioch to convert, they didn't want to convert the Gentiles, but they go out and they do that. Finally, their mission was not to convert the Gentiles. Their mission, as we are told, clearly was to go to the Jews. But when they go um, out there, they don't ask themselves, well, do I have the qualifications? Have I studied in Rome? Has my bishop given me a mandate? No, they felt the presence of God with them. Many of you want approval from your parish priests, from the priests in your parish. Don't wait for approval. If you know God is with you, continue to do the good work. Uh, you know, there are documents in the church, uh, Christi Fideli, Fideli Laichi, which, which empowers the laity. This was uh, by John Paul II. It empowers the laity. So God's hand with you, go ahead. Yeah, he will see you through. That's one and that's the second point also I want to make. He who begins a good work in you will see it to completion. You know, if your ministry is all over the place, then you know God's hand is not with you. But if God brings everything to completion, then you know his hand is with you. Now, when he brings it to completion, also have the courage to move on. Yeah, as I've said several times, don't hanker for posts. Number three, don't play the number game when you're ministering. You know, uh, in the Acts of the Apostles, in the initial chapters, we, told, we were told 5,000 were converted, 3,000 were converted. And we would tend to think, wow. You see, in this case, we are not told how many were converted. We were told that many of them have now become believers, a great number. That's what the text says. But we are not told how many. You know, maybe for the early church, 10 Gentile converts was a great number. And they didn't give up. They didn't say, oh, you know, uh, I think I need uh, a bigger team or, you know, I, I need more people to minister and only then I will. Allow God to speak, to use you, even if it means you are touching the lives of 2,000 people. Sometimes I think, oh, you know, only 3,500 people watch my videos. What's the point? And then you have to remind yourself, these are 3,500 souls who are watching these videos, not just people, souls. Souls who, in many ways, God has entrusted in my hand to continue to teach and to nourish and to build. Uh, yes, it may not be two and a half million. Maybe if it was, I would be a different person. God would, I would not be the priest I am. So don't play the number game. It's something that we tend to do in the church, but don't do it. Number three is discern God's will for you. You know, if God's hand is, as I said, on you, you will know it. You, you might go through a very tough time, but discernment will help you to know whether God wants this for you or not. And finally, you know, uh, even for us as priests, when we choose people for ministry in the parish, 
uh, we need to look at how the apostles chose Barnabas. Choose good people. Choose people of faith. Choose people filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, I want to recall a lady here in my first parish. Uh, she's now resting with the Lord. Her name is uh, uh, was, uh, her name was uh, Ludvina. Now, uh, she's this is from St. Michael's Parish, Mahim. And I remember Ludvina as a peacemaker. She was in the parish council and we would have a rather volatile parish council very often. Um, she was a peacemaker. She brought people together. Her role was in many ways very insignificant. Whether she was in charge of the parish council or not, I think didn't make a difference to her. But she was a person of faith, a person filled with the Holy Spirit and a good person. And these are the kind of people we need to who should be ministering in the church these days. You know, don't look for overqualified people. God, if you look through the Bible, never chose the qualified. He chose the unqualified and he qualified them. So God bless you. Don't forget, uh, so one of my subscribers reminded me, she said, Father, you've stopped saying, please subscribe to this channel. Uh, so please subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to like this and leave your comments. Um, I'm a bit unwell. I've come back also with a, uh, a very, very bad cold. So I'm struggling through this teaching a bit, but it's a joy always uh, to connect with you once again. Thank you. Uh, I also want to acknowledge all the kindness that many of you have sent in the season of Lent uh, for this work that I do. Bye for now and I'll see you again tomorrow.